Hey everyone, Erin from The Impatient Gardener here. It's a beautiful morning in my southeastern Wisconsin Zone 5B garden. And I thought I would take you on a tour because despite the garden being in a not in great shape in, from a gardening standpoint in terms of weeding and edging and all those things that we have to do in spring, uh, it is beautiful. Things have that lush, beautiful, fresh, green spring foliage. Most of the native plants, the native string ephemerals are still showing off. So I just thought we shouldn't miss this moment in the garden to show you this. Also, I thought it might be really helpful for you to get a feel for what the garden looks like at this time of year. Um, I garden in this really strange little microclimate. So even though I'm a zone 5B, my garden tends to look more like a zone four or a zone three garden at this time of year. We haven't had a frost for three weeks or a month now, even though technically we're just roughly at our last average frost state now, but we haven't had a frost for weeks, but we also haven't been warm. So I live like 400 feet from Lake Michigan. So our weather is very much dictated by a very large and very cold body of water. Lake Michigan is at about 44 degrees right now, which means any type of east wind, it's about 44 degrees. It's not 44, but it, it hovers in the 50s. When 15 miles inland, it'll be 80. So things move very slowly in spring here. And so I think you'll see, um, I'm filming this on May 17th. And I think you'll, uh, you get a feel for just why things always seem to move a little slower here. In any case, it's a beautiful morning, so let's go take a look around. Well, I thought I'd start over here by the patio, just because probably the prettiest thing in the yard right now is the service berry that's over here. Plus, um, since we've taken down the trees between us and our neighbors, which is a very temporary situation, actually the trees are coming within, we're gonna have those planted within the next week. Um, we have these beautiful morning views to the lake and the light on the neighbor's kind of whimsical little cottage. And uh, it's, I'm just soaking it all in. I know it's a view we won't have for long, um, but it's a borrowed view that I find really pleasing in the morning. So this garden right now is filled with Virginia bluebells. I planted a few of these, but Virginia bluebells are notorious reseeders, so they're all over the place. Honestly, they don't bother me in the least. Um, as soon as they're done flowering, I just cut them off. But the flowers are um, just the most dainty, charming little things. They look beautiful in a vase with daffodils and the hummingbirds and actually the Orioles. I saw Orioles working at them yesterday. Um, just love them. So to me, this is this would just be bare ground here if it weren't for these Virginia bluebells. So I appreciate them here. This service berry was the first tree that we planted in this yard 20 years ago. It was a gift from my mother-in-law. Uh, it is, to my knowledge, this it's just a regular service berry. It's the species, um, I believe. And service berries were not popular then, and there were not all these great cultivars that are out now um, on the market. This one has suffered quite a bit from cedar apple rust in recent years, so it's just not as full. I'm really hoping that now that it's going to have a little bit more sun, um, I'm hoping maybe it'll bounce back a little bit. Here in this garden, uh, this is the Rosy Teacups Dogwood, which uh, looks like it's going to have a nice amount of flowers here so I'm quite happy um, about that it's a it's a charming little dogwood I always worry about it being in a touch too much sun but it seems to manage it so you know our sun here is just not as intense as it, as it is in other places um, the uh, ginkgo here this is a dwarf ginkgo that I keep pruning but uh, the, f the little leaves as they come out are so cute, little roughly little leaves. Um, I do prune it fairly aggressively, sometimes into sort of a Nawaki style, pom-pom type shape. This is the opposite side of that garden. And unfortunately, we've got three tall elements here. We've got the rosy teacups dogwood, the ginkgo, and then I have this weeping uh, willow. It's a grafted willow. Um, I have problems with that space right there. Anyway, they're all exactly the same height right now, which 
is driving me mad. So ideally, the willow is not gonna change height. That's grafted at that height. I would like the ginkgo to be a little shorter and I would like this dogwood to hurry up and kind of get a little bit bigger. The, the idea for this dogwood is that it will sort of, you know, kind of bend over the path a little bit, but you know, these things grow slowly and one must be patient. Before I move around the corner here, I'll just show you this little part. I don't know what's gonna happen to this corner of the garden. This was mostly shaded. It will not be anymore. Um, so we'll see how these hostas do. I believe this is Elegans here. Last year, I divided a few of them and you can see which ones I divided. The smaller ones are the divisions. They needed dividing, they were dying out in the center. Um, so we'll see what that looks like. Here's a little beautiful shot of the service berry. The flowers are just ending, you know, so the service berries, the flowers, they don't last long. And all of our daffodils seem to be in bloom. I don't know what most of them are, but here's a beautiful double that has great scent as well. This is Earth Angel Hosta. It grows in pretty much full sun. It looks so good right now. It does get crispy by the end of summer. And I know it's because it's in, it's struggling in a little bit too much sun, but it's very difficult for me to move it when it looks this good for the first half of the summer. And this is um, Acer uh, Shirazawam Moonrise, just starting to open up its foliage. Last year I had to cut out, there was a big dead chunk right in the middle of it, and I had to cut out a, a pretty main branch in it. And it seems no worse for the wear. I'm so happy it seems to be uh, in good shape. Um, I do love that tree. We still have some Christmas decorations out, so that's where we're at here. Um, for years, I didn't let the climbing hydrangea come around the corner. And I don't know why, because I absolutely love what it's doing here. So um, it comes up and my thought here is that I will let it kind of clamor along the roof here and potentially get over to the pergola at some point. We'll see. But what I love is how it softens this corner. I, I should have done that years ago. I don't know why I resisted that quite so much. But you can see that the climbing hydrangea over here is looking great. This is one of two climbing hydrangeas I grow. This one was planted in 2011 uh, as a pretty big plant. It's actually doing really, really well. Um, I do keep it from, like you can see, it's trying to climb up on the roof there. We don't want that. Um, and there are issues with I've done videos on climbing hydrangeas and things you need to know about them. Uh, so I'll put a link below and some uh, blog posts as well. This garden is in, just needs, it needs a firm hand, but there are some gems in there. Uh, you can see, well, maybe you can't see. The hornbeams are just starting to leaf out. These are all the new ones we planted last year, just starting to leaf out. So it'll be babying them along again this year, obviously, because they're just, this is just their second year in the ground. I always call this the backyard. This is not the backyard. This is the side yard. This is the east side of the house. Here's a tree peony here. Uh, this was one I got from Clem's Song Sparrow. It was unnamed. It was on sale and it was unnamed. And just a quick note, my probably my very favorite hosta here is June. Planted again in a fair bit of sun, although again, more sun than it was before because now that the tall trees are gone over there, uh, there will be, I think, a little bit more sun. Although, to be honest, I mean, there's still some enormous trees that are still blocking the sun over there. So. You know, this is, this is basically, you know, this is southeast like this. So that gives you an idea of what direction that's facing. Uh, some things are happening over here. We can talk about that once I figure out exactly what's happening. This is the Aurelia Silver Umbrella, grafted Aurelia, 
purchased from Broken Arrow Nursery in 2016 as a one foot tall plant. I couldn't love this anymore. Ex apparently, I've been told, extraordinarily difficult to grow. I wouldn't have known that if someone had told me because I haven't really done much. This is on the north side of the deck. It does want a little bit, you know, it, it does want protection. So the top does get a little bit hot because now it's up over the deck. But even the structure of this before it leaves out is so beautiful. And you can see the, the leaves are just starting to open up here. The only thing to know about this is that since it's grafted, it will send up shoots from its roots, which are from below the graft, which are, uh, I think they call it devil's walking stick, the spikiest plant you've ever seen. And you got to get those out or else they'll take over because they're quite, quite aggressive. I don't often show you uh, the woods. This is what I call the woods. It's not really woods it's just this is an unmanaged area by us that we enjoy quite a lot um, but it's such a beautiful time over here right now because the ostrich ferns are unfurling they grow they grow six inches a day at this time of at this time of year um, they are you know approaching three and a half feet tall right now and if we have enough rain in a given year, they'll get to seven feet tall. They completely block this area. Uh, it's, I obviously didn't plant any of these. These were all here when I got here. I assume they all got here on their own. Maybe somebody planted some, uh, but they're extremely happy here. And what's really beautiful is that some daffodils and uh, Virginia bluebells have made their way into here as well. So it's really, it's really quite pretty. I do plant some shrubs on the periphery that kind of have to make it or break it. This is a spirea. Um, beyond that, what you see back all over here is all skunk cabbage, which is really quite gorgeous. We'll get closer to that later. Really quite beautiful at this time of year. It looks like giant hostas, um, but the texture contrast between skunk cabbage and the ferns is just about as good as you could possibly get. The viburnum that I did a whole video on and said it was sick and didn't know what it was and said I was going to dig it out. Well, I didn't figure it out and I didn't dig it out. There was a part of it that was still healthy and I decided to leave it. And you can see, I mean, I cut off a huge chunk of it. This part so far uh, is looking pretty good and there's we're going to get some flowers on it. I've not even really gotten into this bed to do uh, any cleaning yet, but the Lamium is doing all the hard work here right now. I do think that, so this is ghost Lamium. That's the striped one is not ghost. I kind of think something might've reverted here. Anyway, flowering is beautiful on these. And, uh, or maybe that's, maybe that's pink Chablis. I don't know. Anyway, uh, and then the crab apple is starting to bud up. I mean, just to give you guys an idea of how much later we are than even places quite close to us, um, this is this is where our crab apples are at right now. They're just we're just starting to like have those buds swell a little bit. This is a new garden that we did last year. I use the chop and drop method here, and I think you can see that as these plants grow, it's not really ugly at all. Uh, there's a few things, just some of these are warm season grasses, so they take quite a while to get going. But um, overall, I'm quite happy with how this garden came back. Um, a couple of plants of note, including this one that I picked up at Intrinsic Perennials last year. Uh, Tussock Sedge, this is Carex alata. It's a taller growing Carex, but I am enamored by these seed heads. So the black um, they sort of start black and then they open up to this fuzzy yellow and that is a really good show. I am really impressed with that. I actually like the black better than I like the rest of it, but um, yeah, really, really uh, quite a stunning plant that I just saw at Northwind Perennial Farm down in Burlington, Wisconsin last year and grabbed it. 
and I'm really glad I did. There's uh, four of them here. I'm sure I didn't plant only four. I would never plant four of anything. This is a uh, Flomus. I believe this is the pink one, which I think is Amazonia, uh, is coming up really well. There's only two of those. What is going on with the even numbers here? I'll have to, if I get down, I got those at uh, Northwind last year too. If I get down to Northwind, I'll have to pick up another one. But overall, uh, for first year return garden, quite happy here. Let's just pop around over to Roy's garden while, while we're over here. The May apples are all opened up in their little umbrella way. Uh, obviously this is a native plant here. Again, didn't plant this. There's also a few ramps growing here. There used to be Trillium grandifolium in this area too, and there isn't anymore. I assume maybe the deer got it. Uh, but love, you know, I love it when Mother Nature provides that to me and I didn't have to do anything. This is Roy's garden, the garden that I designed with Roy Diblick. I've not been in here either yet. We did a chop and drop over here too. Um, I need to come in and do a little bit of weeding. Primarily what I'm seeing through here is the dreaded Canada thistle. You guys, how I probably talked about it already in about four videos already this year. Um, there it is right there. Terrible, terrible, terrible thing. Noxious weed that is illegal to harbor. And yet I have people near me who are. Um, and then this is another garden. Now I did this garden last year. Um, this one I did on my own. I sort of took some of what we were doing in the garden with Roy and extended it over here. I actually have to say, I don't see the plants in this garden coming up like at all. This is very odd. There's a whole bunch of, so here's the salvia. This is really weird. I'm just noticing this now. Here's the salvia in the garden that we did with Roy. Same salvias planted through here and I don't see any of them. Quite a mystery and a bit of a bummer. I wonder what that's about. Anyway, um, and then I filled in this garden mostly with things that I, I had. So over here, we've got three blue kazoo spireas, still one of my top two favorite spireas. And those have been planted across the way and I moved them over here. These things were mistreated last year and they have bounced back incredibly well. Uh, the pulmonaria, I think this is, unfortunately I can't find a tag, a really a beautiful one. The, the purple flowers on this pulmonaria right now are just stunning. And as we come over here, this is a rhubarb plant that I didn't plant and until recently was growing in full shade. And I made a rhubarb pie out of it this weekend and it was delicious. It's green rhubarb. I'm sure it's some really old variety. I assume some homeowner ages ago planted it here and you know, rhubarb just lives. The big leaves right here are uh, butterbur, not the invasive type, but they are all aggressive, so be forewarned. Um, don't just go plant it. Do a little research on that babe. But you can see the size of, you can see why I planted this. I mean, let me back you up enough. I mean, that's the size of the leaf there. It's, you know, tractor seat size and then some across the way this is all skunk cabbage again a native that has planted itself here planted a lot of these little cluster daffodils this year i'm going to do a lot more of those they're so pretty uh, roy's going to be coming down to the garden in a few weeks and so we'll do a few videos talking about you know, what he thinks of this area, what we should be doing, um, all those things. It, we did have a lot of erosion along here um, this year, but a lot of these things manage it just fine. Uh, I'll just point out real quick, the purple flame iris is stunning. Just stunning. Those purple leaves, amazing. I haven't removed my rabbit protection off the base of many of my trees yet because I just don't trust those little buggers. I will take it off soon here though. Uh, and this is the tricolor beach, which is just starting to leaf out. And I can't wait to see it, it's so beautiful. 
This is Eryxa japanica, a shrub that I bought at Song Sparrow Nursery, um, which is defunct now. That was Roy Clem's nursery. Again, it was something that we were down there on one of their open shopping days. They were a wholesale nursery, so you couldn't just shop there most of the time. And the person, it might have even been Roy for all I know, basically thrust this into, I was there with my sister-in-law and my mother, and basically thrust this into our hands and said, you need this. We all bought it. That was well over 10 years ago. And we all love it. It's fabulous. It gets, uh, I mean, right now it's doing, it's, it's flowering. Um, those will open up, but they're tiny little white flowers. But they get big green leaves, kind of a limey smell to it, but they're shiny. And better than anything, nothing touches this plant. The deer won't go near it. Climbing hydrangea, looking great. Goes up this tree that we topped. Uh, the big leaves that you see in the middle here are all monk's hood. They come out very early, but those don't bloom until late September, sometimes October. So they actually have really pretty foliage, which is great. Uh, the path is, this is the path you saw us build, sort of, in fall. A work in progress. Um, the edging, this is the edging that we we're going to put in there. Edging is going in hopefully soon. I have delegated that job to Mr. Much More Patient. Uh, the mulch will be removed and we're going to put in gravel there and supposedly he's building a wider bridge that's the same width as the stones uh, but we'll see if he has time for that. This garden is, uh, this part of the garden I should say, is, is a magic little place where woodland type plants love to grow. I should, I wish, I mean, they could just put things in here like crazy because they really, they really do grow well. Um, here's an epimedium. I think this is sulfurium, but just beautiful in flower. Obviously the hellebores, I don't know which one this is. The hellebore is still looking just amazing. I will say this about hellebores. They keep their flowers for a long time. For me, they're late to start, which is why I don't like them more than I do. This is uvularia, which is bellwort in the yellow flowers here. And then shredded umbrella plant coming up there. You know, I actually see that the shredded umbrella plant has a bit of a hole in the middle of it. Generally a side, it needs to be divided. Maybe I should plan on doing that next year. In any case, and then we've got this beautiful variegated Solomon seal here. I mean, this is just a little gem of a space. We've got some trilliums. You can see the white one there. And then over here, we're going to have some yellow ones. Those, that's the mottled foliage there. Here's another trillium that just popped up over here. God, can't complain about that. I believe that's a jack in the pulpit. Going to, right? No, that's another trillium. That's another trillium that's going to do something fabulous there. I think, I don't know the name of this hosta. It's, I think it's Dawn's Light or something like that. What a fabulous hosta this is. And I love this bright color in the border. Here's some, here's some of that uh, Solomon seal with its flowers dangling about to open up. This area is overrun by Lily of the Valley. It's not a situation that I'm happy about. It's a situation that I accept. Where it is kept back is by the amazing Canadian wild ginger, uh, Acerium canadensis. Uh, not as showy as the European ginger, which has a shiny leaf, but this is the best ground cover in the world for keeping out everything else, including lily of the valley and creeping bellflower. Um, and this patch is really happy here. I'm actually going to take some of this for um, another spot in the garden because it's also very hard to find. Uh, much of this I grew from bare root, so if you can find it bare root, it's worthwhile doing. Some beautiful Pullman areas here. Here is another epimedium. This is a pink one. These are blooming about as well as they've ever bloomed in this garden, and I'm thrilled with that. Uh, you'll notice we have a rather large wood chip pile over here. 
Uh, this is all the wood chips from the trees that were, not all of them, this is a small portion of the wood chips that were taken down from those trees. So we're using this for mulch. We're definitely going to mulch the new trees with this and then also we are using it for paths such as this one. Funny story about this path. Um, I Funny story about this path. This was on the list to do for, I don't know, let's say nine months. And I was going to do it, and then I was going to make Mr. Much More Patient do it, and it never got done. And last weekend, I'm like, forget it, this is ridiculous. It took me 20 minutes to do this. So nine months of fussing about it took me 20 minutes to do it. A lesson there. Uh, this is a, a different pulmonaria, same beautiful flowers. This one's called Diane Claire and it's almost fully white. The leaves are, I mean, you can't really tell on the flowered leaves, but you can kind of see that it's mostly white. Probably my favorite pulmonaria right now, but I, I do love pulmonaria in part because they're impervious to deer and all those things. Uh, through here, we've got some Chinensis visions still be growing. We've got Hackamacloa all gold. Um, we've got the Carex Flocka Blue Zinger. This is what it looks like. It's kind of semi evergreen here and I don't cut back this dead foliage. It just doesn't see, I can kind of rake through it a little bit. I just kind of let it go and it gets, it just ma covers itself. It seems like extraneous work that doesn't need to be done. Let's back up a second to this, this tree right here because this is new to the garden this year. There was a service berry here. It was not doing well. Uh, and it has been replaced by Cornus Cusa Big Apple, a tree that I saw at the Coastal uh, Botanical Garden in Maine last year and fell in love with. Now, it's low branching, so it's not exactly great for a path. We'll prune it up. I don't know. I don't care. I needed that tree, and I actually thought this was a charming spot to be. It gets great fruit on it. I will have to be really careful with the deer with it out here, uh, but so far, so far, so good. Um, and I, I do have a soft spot for dogwoods. I, I really, really do love them. Things are coming up uh, in this garden, including things like, there's some stinging nettle. A lot of you said you would like that. You can come have it if you like. Um, we've got some um, Persicaria, golden arrow popping up. Is the chartreuse coming up here? This patch right here is Pignanthema muticum. A fabulous, fabulous plant in the mint family. I planted several plants here, but you can see how it's created sort of a mat. You can definitely manage this easily, but just be aware when you plant this, like give it some room to do its thing. And it looks fabulous because it's in the mint family. Nothing eats it. The best pollinator plant in the entire garden. Um, so many reasons, you're going to be hearing a lot about this plant. So much to like about that. Uh, a quick note on this evergreen here. This is a uh, Eastern White Pine Blue Shag. And somebody mentioned it in a video there. They said, well, what's that yellow, that's, what's that yellow shrub? And I went, oh, well, that's Blue Shag. And then I looked at it again and I said, okay, we shouldn't be having this much yellow on it. So what I think we're dealing, well, I, what I know we're dealing with here right now is chlorosis. Uh, this actually likes really acidic soil. We do not have it and I have not been good about treating it. So I have treated it with, um, I mean, you have to be careful. You can't overdo the acid all at once. So I have been giving it some acid. I hope we can pull it out of this funk. Um, I, it just kind of, I was missing it until somebody said something. So whoever that was, thank you for that. Hopefully we'll be okay, but it should not be this yellow. And the yellow, I think you, sometimes you get that with new leaves, but um, this garden is coming together. We're gonna do some new planting in there. The marsh marigolds are wrapping up their time here. As you can see, the Creeping Charlie is just getting going. Uh, we fight these things as we can. This garden is the next on the, uh, that garden is, pre except for the edge, this garden is, is, man, is pretty well managed and ready to plant. This garden needs um, a serious attention. I'll just point out, I planted two golden Alexanders in here. This is golden Alexander, that is, that's, the rest of these have all seeded in here, which is fine, but I think worth being aware of that 
that baby likes to seed around. I've got really exciting things to happen in this garden this year. Now, unfortunately, we're looking at a lot of Lily of the Valley again. I told you there, there's a relationship we're just going to have to deal with there. But the Carex Pennsylvanica that I planted through this garden has really done well. I am so impressed. All grown from plugs, uh, 2020 that was planted. So I'm really happy with, with that. So we're going to fill work on filling in this garden. We've got tons of fun shade projects coming up. Let's not, let's just avoid that over there. We'll make a quick stop over here at the vegetable garden. This bed is planted up with things that I started. They're still tiny. Everything is just tiny this year. But a lot of Salanova lettuces. Love them. Garlic and onions. The garlic is looking primo. It's um, music garlic. It's the only one I planted this year because it's the one I like the best. And the clemendus in these pots. This is Little Boss. is doing really good. Putting, I've cut it back putting on amazingly strong growth. This one, not as strong as that one, but pulling up a lot of gr new growth from the base. Um, I think that one gets more sun, so that's probably explains most of that. All of these tulips are return tulips. I planted no new tulips last year. So it's really nice to see. It's kind of fun to see which ones came back and which ones didn't. Um, but it's really nice to see the tulip color in here. Some Virginia bluebells have crept into here too. They're fine. And things like here's the um, here's the kefir pear starting to think about blossoming, which is lovely. Uh, these are current bushes. And I had started these as espalier currants, and they were really struggling. So I decided to just let them grow a little bit. I can always go back. In fact, I've got the wire all set up to espalier them on. But they've struggled since I started doing that. So I just let them grow, and they actually have currants on. We'll see if we actually get some currants this year. I mean, some of these double tulips, I'm so surprised that these came back. Um, Normally it's the kind of single ones that tend to. And we've got sweet peas are planted. I'm just starting to fill up the pond. The lotuses arrive, so I'm starting to fill up the stock tank pond so that the water can get can warm up a little bit. Uh, we need to do a little bit of maintenance on the Royal Raindrops Crab Apple Belgian fence back here. But I think you can see it's looking it's looking really good. We'll, we'll walk through this when I do a little bit of maintenance on it, but um, what was that, four years ago now that I planted these from little twigs and looking pretty good. I would say we are two years away from being able to take the supports away, maybe, if all goes well. Underneath these little hoops, I am growing out some perennial plugs. Well, Walter's Garden sent me out some bare roots and some plugs of some things. So we've got uh, Brilliance Fern back there, and this is Feather Falls Carex. This is all for the shade area that we mentioned. And in this one, we have Hecklacloa All Gold and some Still Be Dark Side of the Moon. These are my tomato beds for this year. I move them down one every year. So these are my tomato beds for this year. So that's why I planted these things in these beds because the tomatoes go in last. Those won't go in until after Memorial Day. So these, these plants have two to three more weeks of being able to grow in here before they have to get out. The boxwoods here are looking scruffy. 
which is fine. I let everything look scruffy until end of May. Usually I like them to put on a flush of growth, although everything is slow this year, but put on a flush of growth before I, before I go in there and prune them so that I don't have to prune them again right away. The goal with these is for them to sort of, this is kind of a cloud pruning experiment. So I want these all to grow into a big mass that is all formed. So not individual balls, but um, sort of a hedge, well, a cloud hedge. If you guys have seen cloud pruning, that's what I want to do here. Uh, this is a falling over deer. That's some winter deer protection that I have not removed. I'm actually going to use those for the um, Belgian fence, so I'm just leaving them there till I get in there. I've just been, this is another area that's going to get work done. I've been adding things here. So for instance, more lamium. This came from the garden between us and the neighbors. So I transplanted it over here and I'm happy to have that fill in. And here we are back at Roy's garden. Pastas are all in different, different stages of emerging. Uh, when we get this edging in, we'll see how this goes, but all of this is going to get filled in with soil. We have buried the, there's a pipe that comes from our sump pump out there. So we have buried that pops out over here. So we're going to fill this divot in, divot in with soil. And so that we'll be able to plant fully across here. Uh, worth just stopping here at the Asian pear, which is uh, blooming. This Asian pear, I don't know which one it is. It's gorgeous. I mean, I don't, I've only gotten a little bit of fruit on it. It's not in like a ton of sun, but it's nice and warm over here against the fireplace. It's really here for decorative purposes. I would love fruit because it's delicious. Um, we've lost some big branches on it. You can see like this one right here is very short. We lost all the arms on it. A lot of that has to do with um, apical dominance. You know, it wants to grow up. And I am going to start, as you can see, I've got one, one more shoot going up. We're going to do one more across there and then I'm going to cut it off because I can't get up there any taller than that. So, um, if the opportunity arises to extend a new branch out, I will try to do that. Like this one's uneven over here too, but it's okay with me if it's not perfect. I don't need perfect over here. I need interesting. And I think we get that. These are my regular herbaceous peonies. The only two I have, and they were here when we moved into this house. Um, I keep them here because they're probably the last remaining plants that were here other than trees and uh, Peonies are nice. They're not in as much Sun as they should be over here. That's I mean it's, it's sunny, but it's not like full blazing Sun, but I do like a peony. Um, I probably wouldn't dedicate more room to a peony Personally, but I like these ones here and I think they should they came with the house and I feel like they should stay with the house. And across the way, uh, you see some plants that are being staged for the planting project. We've got three Camisiparous soft serves over here, a whole bunch of shrubs. Shade plants are over there. Sun plants are over here. Oh, here, let's take a look at my sad tulips. I planted tulips in pots last year. They grew great. The problem is we have some varmints. So the only one that's like, you can see how they've just ripped this one apart so badly. The only one that is really in any good shape at all is this one. And I'll take the, I guess I'll soon take this basket off and try to move this up on the deck where they might not bug it as much, but we have a, I guess it's a, I don't know what they throw 13 line squirrel or whatever we call them. They are behind Fred, the seagull here. Do you see these little stones right here? Well, the other day in this little corner right there, there was a whole tulip jammed up there and I saw it moving and the little chipmunk was trying to pull an entire tulip and apparently it's hanging out behind our siding. 
it's all a bad situation. And I haven't planted up this front bed yet, obviously. This is almost, other than the two roses you see here and the clematis, this ends up being all annual, so that's not planted up. The figs are out, as is the generator, because we lost power last night. So we had to pull the generator out, and we haven't put it back in yet, because it's heavy as heck. So lots of beautiful things to happen here, but this is a really special, special moment in spring when everything looks so lush and uh, the colors are just fresh and soft and beautiful. And I didn't want to miss it. So even though the garden is not perfect, I thought we should take a look at it. I thought I'd end with the service berry behind me. We have to enjoy this service berry as much as we can when it's here. Cause like I said, they bloom for about a week if you're lucky and you don't get a rain during that time. Thanks for coming along on this little tour. I hope you enjoyed it. If you saw a plant or something that you wanna know something about, leave a timestamp for me in the comments and I'll try to tell you what things are, but stay tuned. I'm gonna to try to do more garden tours this year um, because I know you're all understanding people who will look past the weeds in the mess, like that bin full of weeds. All right, have a great day in your garden. See you soon.